May God bless you on tonight. Uh, I want to thank and praise God for, uh, for wisdom tonight. I want to thank and praise God for the ability to know him. Anybody know him tonight? Is there anybody in here tonight believe you're going to win all the time? If you believe that, raise your hands. I'm going to win all the time. Praise I'm going to win all the time. And um, my needs will always be met. And um, no weapons formed against me shall prosper. Amen. I overcome all devils and demons. And um, <laughs> I overcome the flesh. And uh, I'm not scared to live. I'm not scared to die. Say amen. amen. Life is good. I said life is good. <laughs> amen. I know that there's a war going on in Israel and one going on over there in Ukraine and Russia and some African countries. Just, just, just folks just, just are going wacko all over the world. And everything is on, on course. Everything is on course because God said that in the last days the purest time would come. And that's what's going to happen. So you may have to get used to it. Matter of fact, I'll tell you that things are going to get worse. And I, what I'm about to say right now does not give me any pleasure. But America is in for some turbulence. Uh, we ain't seen nothing yet. I'm sure you heard about the mass murder in Texas over there. And the mass murder down there in Las Vegas. And just people just mad everywhere, just mad everywhere. So, but um, God has fixed it where we can be surrounded by madness and we still have gladness in our soul. <laughs> Say amen to that. <laughs> and uh, it's my job to show you how to do that. Now, now <clears throat> I, I, I'm, I'm talking tonight about um, uh, how to live holy. And um, I, I would say how to live holy, walk in love, but I'm going to focus on holiness tonight. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Now, had I not quit my job to go full time in ministry back in 72, what I know about this subject, I never would have learned it. Because there's nobody, to, would have been nobody to teach it to me, you see. And, and I'm going to make some statements tonight. And I want you to know that there are some things about holiness that you don't know. And please uh, don't let that offend you, but uh, raise your right hand and say the possibilities are very high that there are some things about holiness that I just don't know. But God's going to show it to you, you see. God's going to reveal it to you. And um, I can make some statements and and I'm sure you'd say amen to it, but from getting from just a statement to the practice is, is where we want to go. Uh, may I tell you tonight that the God of the universe would like for you to walk in his nature on this planet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I got one half amen, so I'm trying it again. The God of the universe would like for you to walk in his nature on this planet. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is to walk in his holy, loving nature. Now, I'm going to tell you, Satan does not want you to hear this. Satan, listen, Satan the devil is afraid that you're going to get a vision in your heart that to live holy and to walk in the love of God is the highest order of existing as a human being. Amen. Now, can anybody think of any life that's superior to that right now? Living holy and loving everybody. What I just say, doing what? Now, if you be honest with yourself, a whole lot of your problem come from you having a bad disposition towards there are certain people who just get on your nerve. Well, amen. <laughs> there are certain people that just kind of 
just get on you, you see. And you don't have the right spirit towards it. In fact, in fact, the devil is using certain people to keep you in bondage. And it's not the people, it's your per perspective on the people that's keeping you in bondage. Amen. You know, some people, if you're, if you're on stream, stream tonight, I, I guarantee you that somebody looking at my face right now don't realize that their big problem is, is that they don't see people through the right prism. They don't see people through the right, um, through the right eyes. You see? Either they, they put people up on a high pedestal or they put people under their feet. Both is wrong. Praise the Lord. And so, so holiness, what holiness does is that it gives you the proper perspective on life. Praise the Lord, brother. When you live holy and love everybody, there's no bondage for you. I, I, I challenge anybody to tell me that a person can be in bondage in their soul while living holy and loving everybody. It can't be done. But see, see what the devil does not, what, what the devil will do is he'll say, oh, either he'll say you can't live holy. And you got preachers on television who will say that. They'll say, they'll say things like something's wrong with everybody. You ever heard him say that right there? Well, I want them to know ain't nothing wrong with me. It was, but it's not now. I'm like, how are you going to be saying that? Because I confessed all my sins. That's what I'm saying now. Amen to God. Hey, by the way, brother and sister, you can't say the Lord's Prayer without confessing your sin. Forgive us what? As we forgive my debtors. So I'm a repenting guy. I'm heavy in the area of repentance. I'll repent in a minute. Don't make me no, I repent privately or publicly. It don't make me no different. Because y'all ain't got nothing to do with this between me, God, and the devil. Amen. It's me, God, and the devil. Everyone's wanting to trick me, but I'll just go, God, repent, get out of here. Right when I was young, I stayed, I stayed in a while, but now uh, I'm going to try that again. When I was younger, I stayed in there for a while, but now I come right on out of there. Uh, oh, I done thought the wrong thing. Oh, I done said, anybody know what I'm talking about? So, so, and I've said this before. I'll say it again tonight. Holiness is not the absence of failure. It's the absence of cover-up. When you discover you've done something, confess it and get back into holy fellowship with God. I told God today, I said, God, are you telling me that you want me to walk in your nature? My God, man. To, 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 to be led by the same spirit that created the universe? Do, do, do you understand, you Christians out there tonight, do you understand that the God of the universe would like for you to be full of his spirit and to walk therein? And somebody say, oh, no, I'm good, I'm good. No, you're not, you're not good. You, you just haven't heard it yet. You, see, you heard it, once you see this in here, it makes all the difference in the world. But you have an adversary. And your adversary does not want you to see this. See. Satan does not want you to see that that sin is your problem. You got two problems. One is a person, one is an act, a, a condition, I should say. Sin and Satan. Help me to say Satan. It says Satan and sin. That's the problem. Amen. Once you use your faith to not allow the devil to lie to you, he's going to always have something bad to say about people. He, he, he's, he's into bad-mouthing people. Praise the Lord, brother. He's into pointing out what's wrong with everybody. And he wants you to think about it and talk about it, see. And you don't realize when you're thinking about it and talking about it, it's yours too. That's why you don't find a whole lot of old, happy folks in the church because they don't talk themselves into bondage. It just doesn't been mean all them years. Now, now, what's going on with them 
is that they're reaping what they've been sowing, you see. I'm reaping what I've been sowing. To. I'm, I'm getting some good stuff right here, man. I mean, praise God, brother. And so I'm just trying to help you. I'm just trying to help you now. So um, now um, put on the screen for me Romans 6, 23. So we're going to talk about how to live holy. Somebody say how to live holy. Romans 6, 23. Now here's the deal. Everybody read that verse. Read. Stop right there. Stop right there. All right. Read that part again. Read it. So what does one get from sin? Death. But the gift of God is what? Through who? So, so either one is enjoying eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord or they're receiving uh, wages from their sin. Is that, does that stand to, to logic for you? If, if you agree with that, say I agree with that. Amen. So, the, so, so, so now the wages of sin is death. Now, <clears throat> how many of you know tonight that um, Jesus suffered and bled and died on the cross to pay the penalty for your sin. Raise your hand and say, I know that. Raise your hand. Say, say it again. Say, I know that. I know that. Now, you, you better make sure you know that now. That he, he, he suffered and he bled and he died on that cross to pay the penalty for your sins. Praise God, brother. He, he didn't die on the cross for you to have a nice home and a nice car and all that. Now, you would get that, but that was not the primary purpose for Jesus coming. He came to suffer, to bleed, and to die. He allowed them to beat him and to whip him and to pull out his beard and to spit in his face, and they beat him with rods, and then they nailed Jesus to the cross. I'm talking about I'm talking about the creator of the universe. That's who that was. That wasn't just some normal person. That was God dying on that cross. And what was he dying for? Sin. He died on the cross for our sins. Uh, glory to God, brother. I said he died on the cross for our sins. Amen. Say amen to that. And you best get the understanding around here that God hates sin and he hates Satan. And I argue tonight that there's no way that God would subject Jesus to that awfulness of, 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 of being crucified and in the awfulness of his becoming sin for us, for us to keep on sinning. I don't believe that. I said, I don't believe that God is pleased with, with his people still living in sin. How can he be how can he be pleased with it when you don't have to do it? It'd be one thing if you had to do it, but you don't have to do it. You can overcome sin through Christ and his blood. But see, there again, though, you have to, be, you have, to have confidence that, that eternal life comes through God. The abundant life comes through God. Praise God. The, the, everything about life comes to God. It, it doesn't come through, through anything physical. There's nothing physical that can give you life. There's nothing materialistic that can give you life. There, there's no position in life apart from Jesus that can give you life. Now, and I know that sounds very elementary, but you'd be surprised how many people hearing my voice tonight are trapped by one of those areas. Why? Why? Listening to the voice of the devil. It was Satan that went into that Garden of Eden and lied to Adam and Eve, lied to them. There they were in a perfect environment, and he went in there and lied to them. And they got, they got uh, kicked out of there because of sin. Say amen. amen. So God sent Jesus to give us a chance to, to reestablish the relationship with God. Amen. But the devil got you thinking, oh, if your wife was just do right, oh, your her, oh, oh, oh. And that's a lie. That is a lie. There is no life apart from Jesus. 
What did I just say? Everything else is just existing. Just existing. Life can only come from Jesus. And he can't pour it into you while you in sin. You got to come out of your sin. Say amen to that right there. Put on screen for me Leviticus 11, 44 and 45. Leviticus 11, 40. Did I tell y'all I love y'all tonight? I'm going to say I love y'all, but I'm going to tell y'all the truth tonight. You're going to get a lot of truth in here tonight. And everybody don't love, how many know everybody don't love the truth? See, some people are looking for pity. They don't know truth. They want some pity. They want God to judge them on the curve. Well, praise the Lord, brother. For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves. That means set yourself apart. And ye shall be holy. For I am holy. I love it. I love it. Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing. And I would add, don't be creeping at night. Glory to God. <laughs> I'm right tonight, boy. I ain't lying neither. <laughs> I just need to laugh right there, y'all. Any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So don't defile yourself. In Jesus' name, verse 45, verse 45. Read, everybody. I bought you out not for you to run your own life. I didn't bring you out for you to get out there and start a party and, and having orgies and getting high and acting a fool around here. I bought you out of there so I can be your God. And I want you to know that Jesus saved you so he can be your God. He didn't save you just to give you a lot of stuff. Get so sad tired of these old stuff preachers. You got everybody, you, you getting ready to get your, your bag is coming in. Your, your ship is coming in. Your ship is coming in. They don't tell you it's got a bum on it. <laughs> For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt. I did that so I can be your God. And he's the God who saved you. So I can be your God. He don't you hold on to nothing that the world had to offer you. That's the problem many of y'all in his church here tonight. You're holding on to stuff that you need to let go of. And the only reason you're holding on to it is because you think it's worth something. And where do you get that idea from? The devil. God wants you to come 100. I need to stop yelling, praise God. God wants you to come to him 100 with the right motive. And the motive has to be so that Jesus will be your Savior, your Lord, and your Master. He wants a Lord over you. He wants you to know you don't own nothing no more. Everything you got belong to God. Your body belong to God. Your soul belong to God. Your spirit belong to God. Your talent belong to God. Your money belong to God. Everything you got belong to God. You don't own nothing. Tell me that's mine. It ain't yours. Tell your neighbor, you don't own nothing. I don't like this. I, I, well, I'm just, I, hey, I didn't write it. Then I'm going to show preach it. That's the problem with people, right? That's the problem. Getting mad because somebody took something from you. It wasn't, wasn't yours. Everything you got belonged to God. You may not believe that it, it's God's keeping you alive right now. If you take your breath, if you take his breath from you, you just slump over right there. Oh, it's your house and your car and your this. You don't own nothing. You're going to find out you don't own it. When your heart, heart stop beating, you're going to find out you don't own nothing. Norman Lear died today, 101 years old. He, he died broke. Oh, that man had, I, you notice that, he had. I said he had. He ain't got nothing tonight. He can't get up and say nothing. He's gone. And what God is trying to get us to do 
is to sell out before we get sold out. The devil will sell you out. Have you running after lust and under pride and can't nobody tell you nothing then? You never say you that and then you're just acting a fool around here. And next thing you know, you die and you say, uh-oh. And the first thing you're going to be asking for is another chance. God, give me a, nope, nope, this is it. This is a one-shot deal. If you miss on this one, you just miss. Praise God, somebody. Y'all still like me tonight? Y'all didn't say amen too strong right there. <laughs> but I love y'all. But somebody got to tell the truth right here. Raise your right hand. Raise your right hand and say, we, all need, we need to get sin out of our life. Yes. Turn your name and say, all of it. All of it. You got to believe that the wedges of sin is death. It's going to kill you. Oh, I know it feels good. Tastes good and everything like that, but it's going to kill you. I said it's going to kill you. Luke 1, 74 and 75. I got to move on here. Luke chapter, chapter 1, verse 74 and 75. That he would grant unto us that we being delivered, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies. Who is your enemy? Satan the devil. You've been delivered out of the devil's hand and might serve him without fear. Go to that God, brother. My prayer, God, have your way, God, in my soul. Lord God, have your way in the way I think, the way I talk, and the way I walk. Glory to God. I want to be pleasing to you because I like the way you treat holy people. <laughs> God's, God's real good to holy people. Yeah, I guarantee you that. See, when you live holy, you ain't got to ask for nothing. He'll go downtown shop for you. Shout that. Bo, 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 bo. What, what, what is that verse that says, seek ye first what the? And here's what? And then what's going to happen after that? Some of the things. Most of the things. All things. See, what people mess up at is they seek things. And they get things, and then they stop seeking. Because cause oh, there's a verse that says that God gave them their requests, but sent leanness to their soul. American Christians got all kind of stuff. Got clothes they haven't worn in all 23. Just, just in there, just stuff all chucked in the closet. My God, brother. I mean, American Christians got everything, but, but we don't have the right thing. We've been going after stuff when we should have been going after him. Hallelujah. Because when you get him, you get it all. I'm right tonight. But you guess what you get more than stuff? You get joy. You get peace. You get love. You get assurance. You get boldness. Hallelujah. All through holiness. Verse 75. Read everybody. We want to get off into holiness. Let's get off into holiness. Ain't nothing wrong with holiness. You can't spot holiness. Now it's slow though. It's slow though. It's slow though. It's slow though. Because God, when you get off into holiness, you want to get that popcorn blessing. Ooh, that's going to be a baked potato blessing. It's going to take a long time to cook that thing, boy. Yeah, you ain't just boom, get up. Nope. God will make you wait. Because God want to make sure you ain't in there for the wrong reason. Thank you, Jesus. But oh, if you wait on God off into holiness, God will do for you what he promised. But so, so what I'm just trying to show you right now, the first thing we need that we need that we that, we, that I am having us to consider right now is that we've been called to live holy. Raise your hand and say, we've been called to holiness. It's not an option. It's not, it's not. Well, some churches don't believe in holding a day to God's church either. I don't care what the name of the church is. Any, anybody, I don't care what the name of the church is, what, what name out over the door, if they're not about holding this, they are out of the will of God. 
Hey, you go judge another church. I ain't judging. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying what the word says. I, I, I'm not, I didn't write this, but I preach it with boldness. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. First Peter 1, 5, 15, and 16. First Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. The call to holiness. We've been called to this hill. There ain't nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with it. You know, when I was a young man, I thought, oh, it's just, oh, it's just so hard. And, and it seemed like God didn't want me to have no fun. Now, where was I getting that idea from? The devil. The devil will come and tell you, you can't have no fun. You're not in the world to have fun in the first place. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you from experience. If you live holy, you'll get more joy and more peace and more love and more self-assurance within you than any other way on this planet. Why? Why is that true? Because you're walking in the nature of the creator. Amen. Read. Now, now, some people say, well, Leviticus in the Old Testament. That's true. But now he's saying the same thing in the New. But as he which has called you is holy. He's holy. So be ye holy. In all manner of conversation. It's not talking about your talk. It's talking about your walk. Thank you, Jesus. You know, nowadays people go, oh, you know, I'm saved by grace. Don't judge me. Well, if you're really saved by grace, you ain't lost by grace. And do you not know that the same grace that saves you can keep you out of sin if you want to be kept? But you got to want to be kept. And you ain't going to want to be kept until you can see what I'm talking about. This is some deep stuff right here. It doesn't get much deeper than this right here. Than for somebody to believe God for a holy life. Thank you, Jesus. A holy life. And you live holy? <laughs> it impacts every phase of your life. Thank you, God. I mean, it, 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 it affects your romance and everything else. Because a lot of romances ain't worth a bucket of you know what. It's a trick. It's a trick. You get yourself romantically involved with somebody who ain't worth the dime. And there you all trap and caught up with them. Can't shake them. Like they like fried paper, can't get rid of them. <laughs> I'm right tonight, boy. And you, you know, see, holiness won't let you get wrapped up with the wrong time, wrong people. Holiness will protect you from Snaggletooth John. It'll, it'll protect you from him. From, from don't want to work willing. Want to eat, but don't want to work. Want to get his hair done like your hair. Got long nails and everything. That lazy rascal. Want to be laying up on you and you go to work and tell them, have a good day, baby. Can I use a car today? And you let him use your car to drop you off at work where he's riding around all day. Like he big time Charlie. You know that's stupid. Somebody ever said that's stupid. But when you get off in the living holy, when you get off in the living holy, you may be romantically involved with a knucklehead or with a hoochie mama. And I want you to know right now, you get off into holiness and holiness will break that thing off of you, boy. It'll break it off of you. And then the Holy Ghost can show you what they really like. Uh, I'm talking some good stuff tonight. Y'all, clap your hand. Clap your hand. Give me a hand in the praise Lord. <laughs> Glory to God, brother. Verse 16, verse 16. Read, everybody, read. Be ye holy. And I'm telling you some people, God would not ask you to do something that you can't do. And you got all these thoughts probably... All things are possible huh? to them that believe. Huh? It's possible. I said, time out, excuse me, can I live holy? I didn't say that. Now, 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 that ain't possible. You lying thing, you. It's right here in the Bible. And you're going to tell me it's possible for everything else but what the Word says. 
You're not gaslighting me, buddy. I know you can live holy because I've done it before and I'm holy tonight. You got a holiness pastor up in here tonight. <laughs> I'm a holiness guy. <laughs> I've been saved all day and ain't no evil have I done. I've been sanctified all day long. Thank you, Jesus. I'm off in the holiness. Turn your knees and say, your pastor's off in the holiness. And I'm trying to drag y'all up in here. Because if you get up in the holiness, <laughs> if you get up in the holiness, you can't stay mad. <laughs> you, you get up in the holiness, you can't stay depressed. There's a whole lot of depression in the black community. A lot of, a lot of mentally ill people, because I'm going to tell you what's wrong with a lot of them. Some of them got a sick brain, but a whole lot of them just full of sin. A lot of people just see, because sin makes you sad. I call it the SS ministry. Sin sad. It's like, it's like the blues. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. The blues always take you down. You ain't never heard of blues. No, it's always. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. dun, dun. Oh, my baby done left me. Oh, she left me all by myself. I ain't got no money, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the blues for you, boy. Sin put the blues on you. I said, sin put the blues on you. And then make you can't smile at them. You just look. That devil beat all the joy out of you, boy. Put fear off in you, hate off in you, and you're just all jacked up in the head. But once you truly repent and get washed in the holy blood of Jesus and get cleansed by the word of God and get full of the Holy Ghost, you can have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Say amen to that right there. Mm. Hebrew 12, 14. Hebrew 12, 14. You're trying to wish you heaven tonight. Let you know holiness is real, y'all. It's real. Read, read. Follow peace with how many men? And holiness without, which no man shall see the Lord. You can't see the Lord in sin. You're living in sin. You can't see God. You may be seeing a ghost, but he ain't holy. Amen. I'm right tonight, boy. Glory to God. Back, back 45, 50 years ago, 60 years ago, you couldn't go to the church of God in Christ two weeks in a row without somebody getting up saying, follow peace with all men. Holiness without. No man shall see the Lord. I mean, they preach holiness every other Sunday, sometimes every Sunday. They be saying, come out from among them and be separate. Amen to God. Come on out from out there. Ain't nothing out there, praise God. Come on into the house of God all the way in. Amen. I'm glad I caught that. I caught that teaching just in time. When I really got my foot in the church real good, they stopped teaching. They started teaching prosperity. They started preaching things like, you're going to be all right. Everything will be. God understands your heart. He know you shacking, but he still love you. Yeah, but he hates your sin, though. He understands your heart. Yeah, he sure does. That's full of sin. Full of sin. And they start making excuses for sin. One excuse after another after another, and we just about excuse ourselves out of the glory of God. Amen. And when people got stopped living holy, they stopped winning souls, and now they want to try to control everything through the ballot box. We're going to vote some good people in. We need more than voting the good people in. We need, some, we need a holy nation. Basically, what we need first and foremost is a holy church. We need holy churches all over Compton, all over Southern California. We need holy churches. This one church here can do only so much. 
but we need a bunch, we need a cluster, a cluster of holy churches. We're focusing on victory over the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, where people are living a sanctified, clean life. And when they come together, something's going to happen. God's going to do something. Thank you, Jesus. Follow peace with all men. Holiness without. There's no man should see the Lord. Say amen to that. So then how to live holy? How, how does, you know, he's called you. How, how do you get it done? Well, the first step to living holy is to accept by faith that you, you became holy the moment you were born again. You need to understand that. When you got born again, you didn't get born again of a sinful spirit. You got born again of the Holy Spirit. Now, I understand babies can't walk this out right away, but, but you need to be taught and trained that this is where we're headed. Amen to God. We're going to teach you young people how to do this. You may fall 15 times a day, but you confess 15 times a day, and the next day you only fall, fall eight times. And you get down to three. Next thing you know, you go all day, ain't done nothing wrong. You, you got to grow in this hill. Say amen to that. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 5.17, put that on the screen. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in who? Christ. What does he become? The question is, what kind of creature does he become? Does he keep being a sinful creature, or does he become a holy creature? What is he? He becomes a holy creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, here's the rub. There are born-again people who are ignorant. They're born again, but they don't know that they don't have to keep on living in the flesh. Some people don't know. And some people, you can teach them, they can't hear. They got, they got so much junk in their head about lying. But it's a wonderful thing. To, to get snatched out of the hands of the devil and get bought into the hands of God. That's, that's some good stuff right there. Say amen to that. But you got to be born again. St. John 3 and 1. St. John 3 and 1. St. John chapter 3, verse, uh, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nic Nicodemus. He was a ruler of the Jews, verse 2. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Verse 3, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. What must he do? Be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God. And I'm, I'm certain that a lot of people go to the American church all over America who are not born again. They're not born again because they keep on living the way they used to live. You're a new creature now. Now, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden everything's going to be hunky-dory in your life, but it doesn't mean that you're new inside and then you don't run out there trying to do what you used to do. It changes your appetite. You don't want to mess up no more. If you make a mistake, you feel sorry about it, and you don't want to keep on living in that stuff because you've been born again. Verse, verse number four. Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Ain't no woman going for that, big boy. <laughs> Thought you were going to come back up in there. No. Let all the women say amen to that. Amen. Can you go back up in your mother's womb? That, that, that just lets you know how ignorant. He was a ruler. He was a ruler with, with that kind of stupidity because he did not understand what spiritual things. Verse number five. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He can't do it. So it's, 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 it's mandatory that you get born again and realize 
that you no longer belong to yourself. You become the property of God. We got too many uh, 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 preachers in the pulpits of America trying to teach people that they can get blessed all on top of all they sin. If you just keep on doing what you want to do, God's going to bless you. No, he ain't. No, he's not going to do it. And then a lot of people quit the church. I, I gave my money and I did, and nothing happened because you had sin in you. That's why. Once you truly repent and start seeking to live right, angels began to work for you. Go there, God, brother. Good things began to come into your life without you going out digging for them. Favor started running you down. Blessings will run you down. Favor and glory and blessings will come on your life. Say amen to that. Galatians 5, excuse me, Galatians 6 and 15. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 15. Got to get all there, no sin in that. I'm going to try to get them in. Because that's right, you're going to hear the same thing over and over. I'm going to preach this over and over and over until you go start preaching. Read somebody. When you become a new creature, that's that adult stuff. Anybody remember when Jesus came into your heart? When a change came into your life? Glory to that God, brother. You knew something happened to you. You knew that something happened to you and that you'd never be the same again. And all you need then is some good, sound doctrine. Colossians 1, 12 through 14. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 through 14. Read. Chapter, no, no, no. Chapter, Colossians chapter 1, verse, verse 12 through 14. There we go. Read, everybody. Giving thanks to God the Father because he has made us meet. What does that word meet mean? It made you fit, made you acceptable. You are acceptable to be a partaker of the inheritance of the saints in life. And you need to know that you did not, God's going to have you to be a partaker of something and it's full of sin. God hates sin. God hates Satan and he hates sin. I do too. If you know the devil, you tell him I hate him. I hate Satan and I hate sin. What did I just say? Because I know what it does to people. It's getting people burning in hell forever. It's killing people before the time. The devil is evil. He's an evil spirit. He's a thief, a murderer, and a robber. And he's always trying to get you to go with him. You ain't got to obey your mama. You, you do what you want to do. So he can get you out there and get a bullet in. That's what he's trying to do to you. I'm right tonight, boy. Verse 13. Who has delivered us, who has delivered us from the power of darkness. Darkness represents what? Sin and Satan. God has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us. What does it mean to be translated? It means to be taken from one place to another. Translated us where? Into the kingdom of his dear son. And I mean to know that you've been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son and ain't no sin in that kingdom. Amen. Oh, y'all didn't say amen like I did. Raise your right hand and say, there's no sin in the kingdom of God. And you've been translated over in there and you're going to try to drag your sins up in there? That, that dog won't hunt. That ain't going to work. And if you really knew how low down and dirty the devil is, you won't want, you want to be with him in the first place. If you really knew how low down and dirty he is and how he's trying to kill you. He want, even, even if you're a Christian, he still want to kill you because he's scared you could go win somebody else. The devil hates your guts. He hate everything about you. And always getting up beside you and telling me, what you do, what you go? Don't you think you all do something? And talking out the side of his neck. He ain't no good. I said, he's no good. Raise your right hand, everybody. Said, the devil 
is no good. Turn your day and say, cast him out of your mind. In the name of Jesus. I love it. I love it. I love it. Verse 14. Verse 14. In whom we have what? Redemption through his blood. Through his blood. His holy blood redeemed you, and his holy blood didn't redeem you for the devil to keep on being your daddy. I'm telling you that right now. God did not go through all of that pain with his son Jesus and for you to claim, oh, praise the Lord, hallelujah, and then the devil's still controlling you. Don't let him control you. He's not your father anymore. He used to be your father, but now you have a new father. God is your father. Jesus Christ is your Savior. The Holy Ghost is your guide and your teacher. You are a new creature in Christ. You have potential of living holy. You got the potential of walking in the power of God. You can do it. Tell your neighbors, I can do it. Thank you, Jesus. Even the forgiveness of sins. Acts 26, 18, I'm about done. Ooh, I don't think I'm going to get it all done. I'm going to try Acts 26, 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. God want to open our eyes and do what? Turn us from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto the power of God. To deliver us from the power of Satan. He's divisive. He's a backstabber. He's always trying to cause trouble. And God's word says that, 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 that to open our eyes so, so he can turn us from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith. That is in me. Thank you, God. Isn't that good tonight? That's good tonight. I got a couple more. I was going to do three more, but I'm going to do two more and stop. 2 Timothy 4 and 18. Is this happening to anybody's soul tonight? And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Raise your right hand and make that statement. Say, God's delivering me from every evil work. Everything that's evil, God's delivering me from that right now. And will preserve me unto the, his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. God has delivered me. The Lord delivered me. Oh, the Lord delivered me. Oh, the Lord delivered me. Oh, why should I be bound? You know he sanctified me holy. Why then I may bound? Oh, he sanctified me holy. Why should I be bound? Sanctified me holy. Why should I be bound? Why should I be bound? The Lord delivered me. Why should I be found? Oh, Lord delivered me. Why should I be found? Lord delivered me. Why should I be found? Why should I be bound? Last verse, first John 4 and 4. Stand on your feet. Stay on your feet. Last verse, St. St. John, no, no, excuse me, 1 John 4 and 4. Child of God, you got the victory, you just got to claim it. I said, you got the victory, just claim it. Read everybody. Now, y'all can read that a little better, I think. That's some good meat right there, boy. Matter of fact, that's dessert to go home. That's a dessert. That's just called potato pie and coffee right there, boy. That's what I love to have me write some big old piece of potato pie and a hot cup of coffee. Thank you, Jesus. Read it like you got the Holy Ghost. Read it.
How many know you got the great I am in you? Well, give God a praise in here. Come on, give him glory. Hallelujah. Glory. He called by Basha. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. 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 In my soul, in my spirit, in my mind, in my body. Holiness, holiness, holiness. Somebody shout holiness. I said shout holiness. Before you sit down, give three people high five, tell them be holy. Be holy. Shadinili kapla prate bidi baba. Hallelujah. I claim that I'm holy. I claim that I'm free from sin. I claim that I got the Holy Ghost. I claim all my needs are met. I claim the way it is made. I claim the door is open. Through holiness, I said through holiness, through holiness, glory to God. <laughs> I better stop that. <laughs> Thank you, Lord God, I pray that this ministry will see in the spirit that there's no life superior to a lifestyle of living holy, and loving everybody. I pray in Jesus' name. I want you to raise your hand and say, God, help us to see in this ministry that there's no life greater than living holy, loving everybody, and winning all the souls that you can in Jesus' name. Clap those hands and say, praise the Lord. And God bless you. Do we have any first-time guests tonight? Anybody for your first time? Anybody, anybody? All right. Let's prepare ourselves for tithe and offering, and we're going home in Jesus' name. Thank you for coming tonight. I pray that you'll go home challenged. I pray you'll be dreaming in your sleep tonight and hear me saying, Be holy! <laughs> it can happen, praise God. Thank and praise God for your for Bible reading this week. Uh, what is it? Jude and First and Second Thessalonians. It's good. Tell you the truth, but I've read all mine already. I'm gonna hear. It got good to me. Amen. It got good to me. So I'm, I'm gonna find me something else to read. In Jesus' name. I gotta I gotta go over to Las Vegas tomorrow. Um, I'm glad they Hope that man, they put, they shot the man that was doing the shooting. So I hope nobody's getting an idea to start shooting over there. I'm about to fly over there tomorrow. And I want to drive with my wife. So, are, you, are you kidding me? She said to me. And so I'm about to fly. And I'm supposed to be doing some teaching for the National uh, Evangelist Department on tomorrow. And I look forward to it. No, I'm going to teach on Friday. On Friday. But I'm going to go in tomorrow so I can get some rest and, and uh, uh, get ready to teach along with my uh, dear friend, Bishop Bob Jackson. Supposed to have folks from all over the country that's going to be there. And, and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to get the mic first. And uh, they think I'm going to talk about pure soul winning, but I'm going to talk about holiness. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm gonna say if y'all live holy, ain't nobody got to beg you to win so. It's automatic, amen, praise God. Okay, if you would like to go home, I suggest you stand on your feet. And, uh, thank you so much for coming tonight. I love you, and I want you to win. Now, don't let this teaching that you're receiving frighten you. If the old time was did it in the Old Testament, if they did it in the New Testament, you can do it too. So I'm praying that God would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation 
in the knowledge of Christ. Now, God, you know what I'm teaching is true. I pray you bless me to teach it with the right attitude. And I pray that through the Holy Ghost, you would reveal it to your people, that they will see that the creator of the universe has invited us to participate in your nature. May they see it. Those who are at home tonight, I pray that God will touch you also to see this and that you will be uh, supportive of the ministry tonight as well. I pray, God, that you cover all of us with Christ's blood. I pray you surround us with angels. I pray you put your hands of favor upon us and protect us from evil. We pray for those families in Texas, those families in uh, Las Vegas who lost a loved one to violence, senseless violence. We pray, God, that you comfort them. And we pray, God, that you touch the people. Take away the anger and the hatred out of the hearts of people. Stop this mass murder by faith in Jesus' name. The Lord bless the tithe and offerings tonight. And bless people to get home safely. And bless them to have a restful sleep tonight. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. Please come and share. God bless you. I'd like you to participate in this time of worship and giving. You can utilize text to give Ministry One app, or go to loveandunity.org. If you would like to text, please text the word GIVE to 310-507-1181 or you can use our new church Ministry One app by going to your Play Store and ordering Ministry One app. It's free. Or go to loveandunity.org, L-O-V-E-A-N-D-U-N-I-T-Y.org, and you can give there. Thank you so much again for joining us here at Love and Unity Christian Fellowship. You're gonna have a good time.